First, I want to talk about your authenticity, and second, I want to talk about Yeah, like ranking. nobody would come up here and say somebody has ugly children. No. To the room full of si they're all judging me right now, you know what I mean? Yes. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> I know, I know. No, no, but, but, no but, but seriously, they are ugly. And but, but the thing is, <laughs> I, I, I'm, people, you know how people will say like, oh, look at my baby, you know? I hate when people do that to me. I, I try to, anytime somebody bring a kid around me, I literally try to get out the room because if you say to me, look at little Sue, she's cute, right? Now, you know damn well Sue is not cute. <laughs> but you want me to reaffirm a lie. I'm not going to do that. I'll just say that's a cute outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, got, Sue got some nice shoes on, but hey, get Sue out of here. What the? <laughs> <laughs> What do I ask at this point? <laughs> How did you learn to live in your truth to the degree to which you do? Now, and I, the reason that's important, because as therapists, we work with clients that are oftentimes afraid to live in their truth because they're afraid about the feedback they're going to get from their family, from their partner, from whatever. But you live in this truth and you get feedback. I mean, anything he does goes viral, mm -hmm. anything. So the feedback loop he gets is from the whole world, but there's a strength and like a solidness in who you know you are. Mm -hmm. And we gotta help our clients get there. How did, how did you develop I mean, it, don't mean, it doesn't mean that it still doesn't hurt. I'll give you a clear example, but I'm super petty, right? <laughs> I'm super petty. And that's why I think me and Floyd Mayweather are best friends because he is the ultimate pettiest person. If you meet him personally, like there's this image of him out there and this is why I res he resonates so much with me. There's this image that we all have of Floyd from what you <coughs> heard in the headline or money, pretty boy Floyd or money team or it's all about money, 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 money. But like he's a he's like a big kid, a good dad, and he's just a really genuine, genuinely good person. But he's super petty. Right. So I used to be and I'm still infatuated with Beyonce. I think she's the greatest artist alive I and mean, she's everything. Right. And I'm a huge fan, huge fan, met her several times. And but the times I would meet her would be like photo ops or like hi you know, or like passing at a party, but like you don't look Beyonce in the eyes, you don't talk to her. She's just, <laughs> she's just a mythical creature. Like she just walks by and you just, you glance at her, but you just leave her alone, you know? Um, but I had met everybody. I talked to Michael Jackson. I met Prince. I've met Whitney Houston. I met all the greats, Madonna's all that. But like Beyonce is a different thing for me. So one day I was um, at a brunch. I tricked, uh, no, I won't say I tricked. I finessed uh, a business uh, person of mine, a business friend of mine to, to buy a table at the Rock Nation brunch for like $30,000 or something. I'm like, yo, you gotta be in that room. Like everybody's gonna be there, Jay-Z, all that. He wasn't a big Beyonce fan, but his, his girlfriend was. And I was like, Beyonce's gonna be there. You gotta make him cut that check. He cut the check. I went as his plus one. We had our little area. We were there all day, and I remember all day just walking around looking at everybody um, and looking for Beyonce. She wasn't there. I'm like, damn, she's not coming. So this was a waste of our time. So we, we were getting ready to leave, and then right when we walk all the way out the door, we, I see Julius, her security. So I'm like, oh, I'm going back inside, because if Julius is here, that means Beyonce's coming. He's like, she's not here. It's 4.30. The event's over in 30 minutes. I'm like, if Julius is here, long story short, I go back in. They leave. Door or literally the door opens. I think there were harps playing, there was <laughs> smoke or whatever, and like Beyonce floats in, right? So I see this Indian guy, and he's like, "Yo," he goes, "I want a picture of Jay Z." I said, "I want a picture of Beyonce." So like his name is Indian Teddy Bear on Instagram. That's all I remember because he. I said, "I said I'm gonna take your picture with Jay Z, but you gotta help me get this picture with Beyonce." But I don't know how we're gonna do it because they don't let you get up on her like that. So when she walked in. I saw that she hugged Jay and she looked over and she goes, oh, that's Hollywood Unlocked. And so then I knew, oh, well, then she knows who I am. Take his picture with Jay-Z. I run, now mind you, at the time, 323 pounds, <laughs> running through this thing um, around the corner because I knew where Jay-Z's seat was and I knew where they were going. They were going to land there. So I was waiting at the end and here comes Beyonce. I'm telling you all this because you can go look at it on YouTube. <laughs> I told him, film me saying hello to Beyonce because I want this moment because I'm going to have my moment. And I go up to her and I talk, hey, B, I got to get a photo with you. She's like, yeah, sure. We take three photos. She doesn't like the first one. She's like, no, 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 let's do it again. We take it whatever. I said, thank you so much. Love you, whatever. I leave. So I had gotten to this huge fight with Nicki Minaj. Her fans are literally a terrorist group. <laughs> they take my video of my moment meeting Beyonce. Have you seen it? See what I mean? She, <laughs> see? They take this video moment, this moment of me be, meeting Beyonce, and they edit it and, it may, and they say, Beyonce running from Jason Lee. And it becomes this viral thing where literally online, everybody believes that Beyonce ran from me. 
Now, of course, what, what I didn't even know subconsciously, that made me just stop talking about how much I love Beyonce. So I stopped talking about Beyonce. I just never really talked about her anymore. And then I became friends with Rihanna, started start talking a lot about Rihanna. And then um, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to fix this. So I bought some tickets to go see Beyonce at the Renaissance Tour for me and Tiffany. Yep, but I bought them on the wrong side. So we didn't get a video with Beyonce. So I had to buy more $4,000 tickets to go to Seattle to get on the right side to get my moment. And so when she saw me, she blew a kiss to me and said she loved me. And I put that online. I'm like, now eat that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, like, that's the way I handle it now. Because what are you going to do? Go online and say Beyonce wasn't running from you? Like, I learned a long time ago when I was a foster kid with a crackhead mom to a person who saw his brother get his brains blown out who had to tell run into everybody who wanted to have that conversation to a person who worked through writing a book about being molested to explain that, to explain what coming out was when I never came out. Like, I don't need to make an announcement that I'm gay. It is what it, I'm not sleeping with you. You don't need to be in my business. Um, I've always had people try to control my narrative. So I'm learning, like, navigating through this world that, like, there's creative ways of controlling the narrative. But it starts with, like, self-control and discipline, which is what we've been working on. I haven't drank in 60 days because I said I want to stop. So I stopped. Now. I would typically celebrate that by drinking, but I'm not going to. <laughs> you know, and then I think we just had our first session with somebody I'm talking to, who, by the way, I'm talking to a crip. Now, here's the deal. I don't judge nobody where they start, because where you start ain't where you're going to end up. Which is the whole reason you're here. Which is why I'm here. And, but I call him Crip Bay now, so all my fans know that I'm, dating, I'm talking to a crip. So every time I go online, they're like, where's Crip Bay? So um, yeah, interesting journey. Um, not perfect, but um, also not really worried about judgment. Like, I'm happy I'm living the life I want. And now um, my friend back there, I'm going to shout them out, Booty and Sixto. Sixto raised like $50 million. He's a former foster kid to help foster kids and foster care legislation. And, and we just had a meeting at my house because they're helping me raise $50 million of my own dollars so that way I can help more kids in my foundation. But you know, like, who knew that being a foster kid, I would lead me on a journey to meeting somebody who was a foster kid who were both in the same space now wanting to use our platforms to help others. But in terms of manifestation, I really believe in God and I believe that like everything I've gone through, my book is called God Must Have Forgotten About Me um, because we all think like, damn God, like, can I get a break? Like, what's up God? You know, what's up, what's up? But then, you know, you realize like he gives the greatest test to people to um, push them to their limits to show you like you can triumph over those trials. And I, I've just gone through mine and I'm sure I'll have more. Uh, but, you know, I've been through the worst, so I'm like, come on, let's go.